Hey guys, how's everyone doing? My name is Bernie. I'm a concept art mentor at CG Spectrum. <clears throat> and today we're gonna use animal references to uh, design our own creature concepts. We're gonna keep things pretty simple, do uh, bipedal creatures, and uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna not add any textures to the creatures, basically. We are going to keep it like uh, hairless cats. You know those hairless cats? Where there's no fur or hair on them. <clears throat> Let me pull one up real quick. Hey, what's up, Patrick? Yeah, so something like this, right? <clears throat> I'm doing good. Good to hear you're doing good too. We just had a daylight savings <clears throat> or the end of it. So um, yeah, things are, the timing and schedule of everything switched up. So I'm trying to adjust to that. But yeah, we're going to keep it so that the uh, texture or the surface of the creatures are kind of like this, where there's no real texture, maybe some wrinkles. Uh, and I'm going to do that just to keep things simple again, uh, so that maybe a uh, modeler who's starting off can base these concepts off of, <coughs> or base their 3D models off of these concepts and not have issues with uh, being concerned about, you know, the texture so much. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to keep things simple. For now, let's start with some warm-ups. Hey, K Kara. Are they cute? <laughs> uh, I guess it's like, um, yeah, I, I know some people really love those cats. They're, they're, I think all animals are cool. They're just different, right? Are they cute? I don't know. <laughs> to each their own, right? Uh, they're all right. They look interesting to me. All right, cool. Let's get started on some warm ups. <clears throat> yeah, we'll just spend a few minutes on each of these. Warming up. Yeah, the cool thing I guess about, well, drawing those hairless cats is that you can see all the forms, right? Right. None of the uh, muscles or anatomy is hidden by the uh, hair, so you could clearly see everything. There's those uh, hairless uh, chimps too. I don't know if you guys seen that. There's hairless chimps where like you can see all the uh, muscles and all of that. They're a lot more muscular than you think. It's pretty interesting. <clears throat> Drawing an owl here. <clears throat> yeah, all the different textures on, you know, these animals are so interesting. There's so much to uh, learn, right? It's pretty endless compared to, I mean, figure drawings, human figure drawings are endless too in terms of what you could learn, but 
Uh, I never get bored drawing these animals. This one here is a parrot. Looks like a, uh, I'm not sure what kind of parrot. It's a green parrot. The birds are pretty cool because um, their forms are pretty simple already. So you can practice throwing in simple shapes, right? And not get caught up in the details so much. So it's good practice if you're not familiar with drawing creatures or animals to uh, start with birds. Their shapes are, again, already pretty simple. Hey, what's up, Trash Art? Why the name uh, Trash Art? Is it because you design stuff with uh, trash? Maybe I already asked you. <laughs> I used to have a parrot when I was a kid that looked pretty similar to this. And uh, I thought I had it trained pretty well because it would, you know, stay on my shoulder or my hand. But then one day I, somebody, I forget who, left the sliding door window open and it just flew right out. <laughs> and that was the end of uh, that parrot. <clears throat> All right, we got some pigs here. <clears throat> Do you guys have uh, pets? I used to have a, a dog when I was younger as well. A, like it was actually a toy poodle. Um, it was pretty out of control. <laughs> Maybe I was a bad uh, owner. Or I didn't train it well. But whenever I left or had food out or we were eating, you know, dinner or lunch or something, it would always try to get some food jumping on the table and stuff like that. I've had a pet turtle. I've had a reef tank before. Those are pretty cool. By the way, as I'm uh, sketching, I'm trying to look at the exaggerate the shapes and the forms that I see like when I see this uh, the snout or the nose of the pig I see that it's kind of like a triangular shape right so I'm trying to show that off and I'm again trying to remember okay if I'm ever going to draw a pig of some sort then remembering that that's a triangular shape things like that are what you're trying to remember as you're doing these studies or sketches so that you could implement it into your own concepts later on. And I'm sure you guys heard of all, you know, creating a library in your head. This, this is exactly what you're trying to do here. As you do these studies, you're creating a library in your head, a library of, you know, in general, what creatures look like and what their eyes look like, what their noses look like, things like that, so that you could sketch it up or mock it up without even looking at reference, <clears throat> initially at least. 
Of course, later when you really want to develop something, it is still useful to check reference and, you know, just to make everything more believable. Hey, thanks for the explanation, Trash Art. Let's do one more and then let's get to it. All right, this is a, I think it's a ram, a mountain sheep or something. Mountain sheep's head. The shapes on this guy's head are pretty crazy. There's a lot more shapes than you think sometimes on this, on some creatures' heads, right? We often automatically simplify uh, what we're seeing, of course, or what we remember about certain animal uh, shapes, right? So when I'm looking at reference here, I'm noticing all these things I never <laughs> noticed before, which is cool. Here I'm exaggerating the angles that I see within the horns. It's like twisting everywhere. I'm kind of trying to show that off. And sometimes I'll use these lines or cross hatching to push, knock things back a little bit, just real quick. Give it some depth. <clears throat> All right, cool. Now let's get to designing some creatures. And I'm just gonna show you guys the reference that I'm working with. And again, keep things very, very simple. Hey, thanks Trash Art. Hey Patriz. Thanks. Yeah, so again, like I said earlier, we are gonna do some uh, very simple concepts. I want you guys to try if you can too. Just bipedal. So there's two legs and uh, yeah, we're gonna select some reference to start off. Give me a second. Let's start with a frog or salamander type. Again, we're not gonna add any textures. We're gonna keep it like a hairless cat. No textures on it. So this is the reference I have for a salamander. I'm 
This is pretty easy to start with because it doesn't really have too many textures. All smooth skin. And the shape itself is pretty simple. Sometimes it is more difficult or challenging to make something that looks very simple, interesting, right? But yeah, that's part of the challenge. You got to exaggerate the forms that you see a little bit more. <clears throat> Anyways, cool. I'm going to look at that and I'm going to also look at some frog designs. At least uh, for the legs. And some tap hole designs, especially the tail part of it. This is pretty cool. This one, uh, like the toad, I think it's a toad, yeah. We'll save that for a different design. <clears throat> but yeah, again, let's start with the salamander, frog, and tap pool. Alright, cool. All right, so I'm gonna start very, very loose. Every time I, for me at least, the way I design things, is I wanna stay as loose as possible. I don't wanna be concerned about, again, what looks right or wrong. It's more about exploring des the design and ideas before I start rendering it pretty, right? And when I'm designing a creature, I want it to be believable. More than anything. I want the different um, parts of animals that I combine to be, to flow into each other again, to be believable. If it's not believable, then it just looks odd, right? Have any of you guys designed uh, any creatures by combining, you know, different animal parts? Nobody? <laughs> All right, cool. So yeah, this is pretty basic. Uh, I am trying to pay attention to the silhouette and the balance of the shapes, right? I don't want the top and bottom to look equal, meaning kind of like a bubble like this. That doesn't look good, right? If the body area, the torso was like that. I want there to be a balance like yin yang type of good thing going on kind of like that where this big curve flows into this larger curve right if that makes sense so kind of like hands right where if you do this it kind of supports each other right that's basically what you want to do for every aspect of a design uh, that's uh, organic or natural looking so it doesn't end up looking bubbly. So another example, if I exaggerate, you don't want it to look like this. Right? Where everything looks bubbly. Because the curves are basically uh, mirroring each other.
Hey, Kara, you're doing an ostrich humanoid creature for the intro concept art co project? Awesome. That sounds interesting. All right, so we'll leave that one. Actually, let me draw in the uh, other side of the leg. The other thing also is when I design something like um, these creatures, since I don't know exactly what it's going to look like when I'm sketching it in, for me, at least the way I design it, depending on, again, the overall shape of the creature, I'll do it from a side view, a profile, so that I could really understand the overall proportions, right? If I did this in a three quarter view, I can do it. But again, it's not easy for me to grasp uh, the overall proportions, like how long the torso and the tail is compared to the head. In perspective, it's hard to gauge that, right? So that's why I'll start in a profile view and then I'll put it in a three quarter view, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm just sketching it in for, for myself really to understand, again, what the proportions are gonna be, what the overall this silhouette is going to be. Let's do another one that's the same thing. Salamander, frog, and tadpole. Let's just see if we could come up with something a little bit different. So this time I'm gonna curve it up so that the back of his neck and head is higher than this one. Let's see if that works. Yeah, maybe I'll have this guy's tail just on the ground. Or we could have it curve up like that. That's kind of, it's more stylized, but I don't know. It looks kind of fun. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, let's try that. Make it look different silhouette wise. So we'll move on to another creature. Save that real quick. Yeah, uh, Patriz the uh curves and everything that's again yeah hair and beards everything yeah they compensate their direction or they counter the direction right uh, that's right that's how everything looks pretty natural all righty let's go to I have images of lizards where they're pretty much going to be the same as these. So I'm just going to combine them later on when we further develop these. 
So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna skip the lizards. Maybe we'll, we'll try a crocodile version. So these are my crocodile images. I think this is the albino crocodile. That looks really cool. <clears throat> but we are going to simplify this. Uh, there's a lot of little details and bumps on the uh, crocodile's head, right? <clears throat> and obviously the scales behind uh, the top of his head. Uh, we're going to, for the most part, ignore all the little details. But yeah, let's try this out. <clears throat> Just bring this in. I want to flip it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know what's going on. My my throat is all messed up right now. <clears throat> all right. Let's try a crocodile. Again, I'm just trying to get the gist of it. See what we can do with the legs. Maybe we'll bring the legs up. See what that looks like. Let's change it up. look awesome on it <laughs> cool thanks you guys are too nice <laughs> oh you mean in the picture okay <laughs> yeah. it does look awesome you see that um the blood showing through right because it is a uh, it is albino looks really interesting All right, let's get some of that detail shape in there in the back of the head. And I think we do have to add a tail here or else it's going to look odd. Let's see, let's flatten this out. Oops. Okay. See if I could think of uh, another type of tail. Hmm. Maybe we'll add a uh, scorpion tail to it, but it, it'll look similar to that. Or maybe it's the other way. So it could actually poison something. That looks weird. I think it's because the uh, curve is unnatural looking. 
looks too much of a perfect curve. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, we might, we're probably not going to end up using this one, but it was worth exploring. Oops. I like uh, the ones on the left a lot better. And I actually did some sketches earlier, right before the stream, I was just messing around. Uh, just for uh, time's sake, we'll move on to some of those and developing those as well. Alright, cool. Yeah, so let me show you these guys real quick too. Again, these are all bipedal. I combined a elephant and a stork. Like at least the legs are stork legs or some kind of bird legs that are pretty long. Here the elephant, I give it four tusks. I recently watched something where like some, you know, prehistoric Doric elephants had uh, four tusks, so I wanted to try that out. And I thought it'd be cool if, you know, you see the elephant using its nose to reach down uh, since he has those long legs. Uh, <clears throat> For this one, it's uh, kind of a warthog pig uh, combined with uh, ram's horns and a bat nose. And this is the uh, three quarter view of that same design. So again, I would do a side view first to design it. And then I would do a three quarter view. The one on the top left right here is based off of some kind of a stork or bird, bird's head, crane's head. And then I just gave it some T-Rex arms, those tiny T-Rex arms and like a chicken wing. <laughs> and the one on the bottom right, or bottom right here, is a combination of a toad and salamander, and maybe some frog legs. Uh, so let's get going with these. I'll choose some of these and start developing it. Let's start with the warthog, or the uh, pig. Yeah, let's see how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to lighten everything up and redraw it, basically. So I'll do the three quarter for the uh, warthog or the pig. Cool, thanks. I like this pig too. So now, right now, I'm really not gonna look at reference. Earlier, I was looking at reference, which again, just because of time, I'm not going to look at reference, but you guys should always try to if you're not sure what something looks like. Uh, but again, I'm loosely basing this creature off of, you know, a pig. So as long as it kind of resembles some characteristics of a pig, I'm good with that. And again, if I run into issues where I'm not sure what to do or something doesn't look believable, then I might go back and check out some reference. Again, I remember that the pig's eyes are kind of poofy on top and on the bottom. And I know the nose is scrunched up like that. So that's what I'm trying to remember. And the nose, again, I'm going to kind of exaggerate it, make it look kind of like a little influenced by a bat nose where it's pointy up there. And of course, 
the big tig snout looks pretty thick right so again this is where i am trying to refine it earlier i i wasn't concerned about that when i'm sketching so much but now i'm i am really trying to refine the shapes and the design And I decided to keep the tusks here pretty small because I want the ram's horns to be more dominant in this design. And I am always trying to describe the form so it's volumetric. There's a lot of volume there. So you can see that I'm drawing around the form, trying to describe the shape of the overall form on the lips. And indicating some teeth right there. Describing his throat area, <laughs> making it sag a little bit, make it look a little gross. Draw his ears in. Yeah, I'm making them kind of droopy. And let's describe the horns. And I'm going to uh, try to show off. I am going to add some texture to the horns. Not too much, though. I'll keep it 
I'm gonna try to keep it simple. At least uh, show off some of the textures so that I can show off the form, like the way the horns are turning right. Yep. And the other side. And once you start refining uh, your design, sometimes you'll notice that certain things don't look right. It's easy to get away with things when um, everything's sketchy, right? But once you again start defining things, certain things don't look right. And you're gonna have to make the fixes right in your design or make adjustments. <clears throat> All right, so now let's throw in the legs. Yeah, I'm going to make the legs. I mean, you can see I made them pretty muscular looking. The point of that really is so that it looks like it could support this large head if i made them too uh skinny looking it really wouldn't look right so those are things you want to consider as well when you do uh creature designs it has to make some sense visually that you know it could support its own weight things like that For the feet, I'm just combining both the design of a pig's leg or feet and a ram's feet as well, just combining the two. <clears throat> and indicating the back foot All right, and now we're just gonna add in the uh, butt area and the tail. Hmm. All right, let's just say that's done. Oops. 
<clears throat> yeah, so I'm just going to directly paint over what we have here. Or under my line drawing. I'm going to colorize my line drawing real quick. Made it, I'm going to make it a multiply and then paint under that. We'll do the typical uh, pig skin color. Let's do something like that. We might make the horns a different color eventually. But yeah, I'm basically going to block everything in. The whole silhouette. And this is this is a stage where you can really check if your silhouette is solid or not. Or interesting looking, right? And make adjustments if necessary. Have you guys ever uh, drawn at a zoo before? Drawn animals at the zoo? That's something that uh, we used to do when we were in college. We would take some trips to the zoo, take all our drawing pads and everything, <laughs> lug it all over. And you know, you, you would usually draw like a small crowd or you know, people would, Kind of look over your shoulder and see what you're doing. And yeah, the toughest part is really uh, trying to f pick and choose animals that won't move too much, right? We got that blocked in. I'm going to darken it. <clears throat> and I think I'm just going to do a uh, start with a light pass. Sometimes I'll start with a shadow, but in this case, hmm, I don't know. I feel like doing a light pass first. So I'm going to picture it like the uh, lighting is coming from the top uh, left. I'm looking for my hard edges here. And they are on the side of where the uh, lighting is coming from. And all I did there was uh, lower the uh, hardness on the 
brush edge going to the left softens it up. And I always, <clears throat> I always want that uh, light dark play going on where the light is uh, skipping over the surface of uh, this creature. Again, it's light here, <clears throat> dark here. Let me describe it in a filled circle, light, dark, and then it's gonna get light again. I want to continue that light, light and dark play so that the forms read. I know sometimes uh, people get confused about where to uh, add their lights and darks and why certain parts of the uh, their painting don't re doesn't read well. And it's because you're putting light next to light and dark next to dark. So, yeah, the forms are, aren't going to read as well. You always want that alternation of light and dark between the forms. And in the beginning, it could be a little confusing but the more you practice it, it's just gonna become <clears throat> pretty much automatic. You don't even have to think, you just do it. But the more complex a uh, design is, it does get confusing sometimes. You do have to slow down at times to make sure all the forms are reading. The more layering there is, the more, uh, again, intricate, intricate top design work there is takes more time, obviously. Here I've chosen to make the back or the, uh, the area behind the snout lighter. So I put a hard edge there. I'm gonna make or put a highlight on the nose itself here, but not at the edge. So again, that dark light play continues. So those are the decisions you have to make when you're doing lighting is where you're going to, what aspect, what side of the form you're going to make darker and which side is going to be lighter. Because you can't make both lighter. Like, for example, if I made this edge light too, because I think the light's coming from the left side, it's just not going to read as well, right? So I have to decide to make that part darker. So that form reads. And even the tusk here, I have to decide, okay, which do I want to be lighter overall? And I'm going to decide here to make that tusk darker and make the cheek behind the tusk lighter so that that silhouette of the tusk reads more graphically. I feel like I'm adding too much detail here, but um, I'm just going to go with it. Uh, yeah, this may not be for a uh, beginner modeler, but who knows? I mean, it depends. I, I think they could edit out some of these details uh, if they want to. And I decided to add a little lip at the bottom of the upper part of the mouth. <coughs> So it's kind of like wrinkled or thicker there. That's why I'm showing that area catching the light.
here as well, I'm going to make whatever's behind this larger horn uh, generally lighter. I'm going to choose to put that horn in silhouette and just overall be a darker value. <laughs> yeah, he does look pissed off, right? Someone stole his food. <laughs> yeah, Patriza, for sure you could uh, model it. Anything I do here, or anything, you could just model whatever I do. You don't need permission from me. Just go ahead and do it. Do you, Patriz, by the way, do you think uh, this is too complex uh, for a, I don't know, a beginner modeler or a student? Let me know, because again, sometimes it's hard for me to gauge uh, what's too complex or what's just right, you know what I mean? Or what's too simple. Again, in this case, I wanted to do something that's not too complex, but still interesting enough, right? Where, um, you know, the modeler could have fun modeling different forms and things like that. Keep them interested and somewhat challenged. Oh, is it frozen? Hmm. Doesn't seem like it is on my, I don't know. Anyone else? Is it frozen for anyone else? The screen? If it is, can you let us know in the chat? Oh, okay, it's okay for you, Flippy. Thanks, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, it seems like it's fine. Oh, okay. Woo! <laughs> yeah, we don't need more technical difficulties here. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do if it was frozen. <laughs> Anyways, you can see that as I'm going down the, uh, the creature, in general, the uh, value is getting darker. And that's what you want because uh, you want the uh, lighting to look like it is coming from the top down. And I generally want the attention to stay up top where my focal areas are. I don't want you just stay like looking at his feet, right? I want you to look at his face and the horns and things like that. And the overall uh, form, the overall read. So I'm lightening this stuff up here and the, sh the shadows up here so that it's not too busy looking. I want some solid areas that look thicker and chunkier and not so intricate looking. So that is why I'm doing that. It's always good to have some contrast between details, right? Detailed areas and uh, some areas that have give you some breathing room, right? So it makes the detailed areas look even more detailed when you have some breathing area. Does that make sense? If everything's super detailed, it actually flattens out uh, because it en ends up looking like a pattern. Like a pattern design. <clears throat> Alright, let's go a little bit faster. I feel like I'm going too slow. I wanted to do uh, more designs, actually. And even for the ear, I'm gonna I'm deciding to put a little lip there, like in a little edge that flips up a little bit to catch some light. So it doesn't look super flat.
<clears throat> a little bit of wrinkles here behind the ear where it connects to the head. Hey, thanks for the reply, Patriz. Uh, yeah, you're saying that this, you feel like it could be pretty good for a, a beginner modeler. Cool, that's good to hear. Finish up this snout area. I'm going to have it so some of that light is catching or ambient light is hitting the bottom of that snout as it curves out slightly. But then it is still creating some shadowing right underneath the tip. And let's go to the rest of the body. Actually, let's add a little bit more detail here. Yeah, I think I just really like doing details. So I get caught up in it sometimes. Are any of you guys like that? I'm basically imagining that this is like a shoulder. I don't exactly know what this would look like in a pig because of course the anatomy has changed quite a bit here. So I'm just drawing from my knowledge of human anatomy and trying to apply it here. And the reason why is because it's, you know, as long as it's from nature, it'll look right somewhat or you can make sense out of it visually. Make those wrinkles a little thicker, chunkier. Cause skin or the skin of pigs are pretty thick, I think. That's how I picture it at least.
Yeah, and I, when I design this kind of stuff, I don't necessarily think, again, that it has to really match uh, the anatomy of a pig. When I'm doing all these details, the tendons and the design of the foot, I know it's not perfect or, you know, what it should be. I just want to create a creature inspired by something and the little details don't matter. Uh, as long as overall it looks, you know, it's obvious what it was inspired by. And again, for me, the number one thing is to make it look somewhat believable. Like it could exist, right? I'm gonna put a fat wrinkle behind the shoulder area. Kind of like a lat or trap indication. So it looks like that arm or that leg, it's actually a leg, right? It's pushing against his body. Again, making it a little bit more believable. <clears throat> all right cool we're almost done with the uh first pass the lighting pass trying to go as fast as i can without ruining it <laughs> We'll keep that other leg in shadow. Uh, we'll have some of that light ambient or bounce light coming in, hitting the uh, belly area or his ribs. And we will throw some lighting on the horns and the tusks and his hooves. For that, I'm going to lay down a different value. Let's go back. So I just want to make sure I'm under my uh, drawing, line drawing. I'm going to do something a little cooler brown. Hey, Margaret, thanks for joining. Margaret's in a, one of the uh, classes that I have, group classes. I'm doing good. I'm having fun drawing this pig beast. Looks weird, but it's fun. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, so I'm making sure that I change up the values as well on the horns and tusks so that it separates itself from the uh, rest of the uh, skin value. So it stands out. And I'll adjust the values and color a little bit after I, uh, you know, block it all in. Just to make sure that you know, we're, we're working with a good base.
I'm just going to darken everything up under the mouth as well as I'm doing this. Let's darken it all up. The nostrils and the eyes as well. I'm just going to darken it up in the stage. And you could think of these as just adding in dark accents. At a certain point of painting, you do want to address that where you go, you know, zoom out and look at it and see where you want to accent certain areas with shadows or darker uh, values to pop things out, to bring some more attention to it. So that helps a lot. The hooves I put on a different layer because I think I don't want them as dark. Not sure yet. All right, cool, so, oh yeah, let's do the tail too. So I'll keep down the same layer as the, uh, the hooves, because I don't want this to pop out as much because it is going into the background. Let's just leave it like that. <clears throat> I'm just adjusting the value and color slightly just to see if I can make it work better for myself. I think that's good. So here I'm going to do a light pass on the horns. Go a little bit lighter. Again, I'm starting with those hard edges, making sure the uh, form is reading. And I'm trying to keep things fairly simple. I gotta keep telling myself to keep it simple. Don't go crazy with the details. I do want to darken that edge right there. I don't want to light it up all the way to the edge because it will look like a paper cutout in a sense. So see how I'm putting the highlight right there instead of the edge. Again, it's just so I avoid making it look like a paper cutout and you see more of the volume even on that edge. Here I'm going to bring that layer up above the uh, line drawing actually that line drawing is kind of interfering with what I'm doing so I'm just going to do that.
And I'm going to put a little shadow under the ear. So I'm going to skip that area right underneath that ear. Let's do the other horn. This one, you do have to be more careful because the horn's in perspective. Uh, so again, just as long as you continue that light dark play, it will help things read because there's so much overlap here. You want to make sure that your forms are still reading, even if it's, again, being kind of scrunched up with all that overlap and perspective. You want to make decisions on, again, what side is dark and what side is lighter. You want to continue being disciplined about how you're describing your form. It's easy to get lazy, I know. But yeah, it'll pay off if you're disciplined with how you're describing the forms. And here I'll have some light hitting this horn that's popping out back here. And so it's creating a sh his, the pig's head is creating a shadow on the back side of that horn. Just to show off some lighting. And we'll get to the tusks now. Looks like we're not going to have a lot of time to do the second one, but I'll at least try to finish this one. I mean, I'm sure we will finish this one so that, you know, you guys have something to work off of if you want to model it. And then if we have time, I'll try to quickly paint up one of the other ones just for fun. And maybe we'll continue that one next week as well. By the way, uh, just asking you guys, is there anything you guys are interested in uh, seeing with life drawing? So basically anything that we can do or that I can do that's based off of uh, reference from life, right? That's what this stream is about. So let me know. And those are things we can consider for the future, any future streams. Let me know in the chat. Here I am going to add some texture once again, just because it is the hooves. Uh, I think adding texture here will make the skin part look smoother because of that contrast, right? Reaching something rougher looking and smoother.
The tail will just indicate the light hitting it slightly. <clears throat> no ideas? Nobody wants to see anything done in for these streams? Feel free to just throw it in there. So I'm going to make a new layer and I am going to add some highlights in the shadow areas for the darts or the uh, where the horns are. I'm just going to make it more desaturated and a little bit darker so it's going to look cooler. Just don't want to lose all that form just because it's the shadow. <clears throat> I'm just quickly indicating it. Cool, and I am going to do a dark pass now. Just a little bit, not too much. Yeah. I think I'm going to just do it on a multiply. Just because of time. And doing this will really pop the forms a lot more. I am going to go back and make those uh, gums look or add some warms to it. So the gum area, the nose, I am going to add some warms in there just to vary up the skin tone. Merry Christmas? Why so early? <laughs> they are uh, selling Christmas ornaments and stuff like that super early though. At the stores. So it almost feels like it is already like Christmas time when you go to the stores, right?
<laughs> the wrap version. Yeah, this area is kind of like a tangent because the way the uh, horns curve around the ear, it almost looks like, you know, it's following it, which it is kind of. So that is kind of a tangent. So you want to make sure that that's why I'm kind of redefining the values here to make sure that it looks like or I'm making the overlaps read a little bit clearer, right? All right, so now let us add some uh, warms to it. I'm just going to put on a multiply again. Choose a warm color, something reddish pink. And let's throw it on the nose. Let's go a little bit darker. around the eyes a little bit. The lips, the gums definitely. to the ears. And this helps separate some of the uh, shapes here as well. Especially as you can see in the ears and the nose. I didn't put any worms right behind that nose so it separates. So that's what you want to keep in mind when you're adding in your warms or any color variation. It's an opportunity to separate forms again using color. And in general, I think I'm going to make the throat a lot warmer overall. Oh, sorry, I can't, you know what guys? I can't even hear the music. I have it so I can't even hear it. You're just listening to uh, the music that, or the audio that's coming from my desktop. I have it so I cannot even hear it. I wish I could, but I don't know how to do that right now. <laughs> oh my. 
It's dead silent where I'm working right now. I don't hear anything but the computer fan. That's kind of sad. <laughs> All right, I'm almost done adding the worms here. I'm gonna make the uh, bottom of the foot a little bit warmer. Next is do a highlight pass. So the reason why I added the worms first and made it slightly darker is so that I have a uh, room to add a highlight pass on top of all this and it'll create some depth in the way I'm painting without trying too hard. So now I'm going to have to choose, be selective about where I place my highlights because those are going to be my focal areas. So it's more about editing than throwing highlights everywhere. You want to edit where you place it. You don't want to put it everywhere. It's going to get spotty and it's going to actually flatten out your image. And you don't want it to be the same intensity everywhere. You want it obviously most intense where you want the viewer to look at. And it's an opportunity for you to indicate some texture or like to show the surface of, <clears throat> of whatever you're painting. Like if it's super smooth, right? Or a little lumpy or textured. That's, a, that's what you want to think of as you're adding in the highlights, because the highlights are going to catch on things that are higher, right? And sometimes if I'm not sure where I, want to, where I want to put my highlights or how much of it I want to put on, I'll, I will just start throwing it everywhere and then I'll look back and erase the stuff out if it's too busy, right? So sometimes it, you know, it's, you don't want to have that mentality where you're trying to get it perfect at your first pass. Uh, you know, you could erase it out after applying it. So just try things out. I know I want to highlight on the snout so that that nose pops out. And I want this tooth to stand out in front of everything so I am going to add highlights on that. See, against that darker silhouette of the tooth, it, the highlights really pop, right? So that's stuff you want to plan for. That's why I decided to make that tooth darker as a silhouette, as a shape, opposed to making whatever's behind it dark. I, I decided to make it lighter on the outside, right? Whatever's behind the tooth.
<laughs> Aid Patriz, yeah, I, sometimes the music does match, right? But sadly, I was unaware of what, what kind of music was on. <laughs> I do usually like drawing with music on, though, most of the times. Uh, yeah, especially music with no lyrics, which it is right now, right? So yeah, I prefer that. Lyrics for me get distracting. Um, or I want to sing along or something and it'll get distracting. Yeah. This, the forms here are unclear. Uh, that's something I got to figure out, but I'm going to leave it for now just because of time. I'm going to move, keep going forward, trying to get most of the image done. I do notice that it is getting spotty because my highlights are kind of the same intensity. So I'm erasing some of that out. And again, um, when you're doing highlights, you do really want to slow down. Right now, I feel a little rushed, so I'm not going as slow as I should be. So I am realizing I'm making some errors here and there. I'm just hoping that I could finish this, or I just want to get this as far as I can. Uh, for this session so that we can do something else next time. All right, so I'm going to color select this part as my lights for the hoof area. And just indicate lighting on it. Not going to go too crazy with that. Bring that up to the horns. And again, gonna keep it quite simple. I know we could add a ton of texture to this, but I'm trying not to. Thank you. 
Mm. All right, cool. <clears throat> All right, now for the last, well, few layers that I have, I'm going to try an overlay on top of this just to see if I could group my lighting a little better. Do a soft brush. might not work it's worth a try it might get too bright and it does give me some uh, color variation as I'm doing this as well so I'm just trying to unify some of those groupings because it does look quite busy to me well, at least busier than I wanted it to look initially. Hey, thanks, Patrick. Yeah, we'll adjust the saturation once I'm done with this pass. So let's try desaturating a little bit and lightening it up. Let me, oops, what happened? There it is. I try moving it onto another monitor just to see the colors. My Cintiq, like very off, looks all right. I just wanted there to be some more variation and unify the lights a bit more. I think that helps. See if I could throw in some saturation in the gums little highlights in the gum area and maybe around the eyes just a little hints and we'll add some more contrast to the eyes and add a highlight <clears throat> I 
I'm gonna clean up the edges a little bit. That's something that you do wanna do as well is clean up your silhouette and again, make any fixes that you need to to make your silhouette read really strong. Pay attention to like the curves, what angle curves are going. <laughs> yeah, it could be a D4 character, huh? If I made it look even crazier, right? Uh, add spikes everywhere. <laughs> yeah. We could add like little scars here and there. It's always fun to think about adding scar scarring on pig skin. Maybe he's, you know, been attacked by things where he's attacking things and around his mouth. You know, like the great white sharks have all these scars around their mouths. That could be a cool look to try out. If you're modeling this, you could try different things with that. Yeah, you could put little cuts in the ear, little nips. Here it actually looked like there was like a little lip ring around here, so I'm just gonna make it look like a ring. Just giving the modelers an idea of what they could play around with. Uh, yeah, you could put a little ring around there or even around here. Or on the horns. That looks weird, but you get the idea. snout right whatever you want you can put rings everywhere that looks odd sorry about that guys <laughs> I'm just rushing it 
I'm gonna take it out. Looks gross. Uh, it depends again on the work environment you live in, Patrick, or you work in, Patrick. Yeah, sometimes the AD will be, you know, coming by your desk and checking out what you're working on as you're working on it, which has happened, you know, it was like that for me <clears throat> at Blizzard and yeah, they would just tell me what they thought right, up, right away and I would make adjustments. Um, I actually prefer it that way because I don't, you know, if I don't want to be sitting there wasting time on something that, uh, like wasting rendering out something or visually communicating something that the art director doesn't even want, right? Um, what's the point of trying to like sell something if, and just waste like days of work trying to convince your AD that something looks cool when they could just take a look at a, even a rough sketch like this, right? and decide if that's the direction they want or not. Or even at this stage, like you're saying, they could say, hey, looks too much like a normal pig. Uh, let's make it look crazy, like demonic. Like, let's look at you, make it look even more demonic, right? Let's go crazy with it. I like the idea of showing his rib bones because it kind of it's a oxymoron or paradox where you can see the ribs of a pig I think that's kind of fun to look at Oh yeah, and you could add little bits of hair underneath. Maybe we'll add some real quick under its chin area. We'll just indicate it for fun. It's a nice little detailed touch. It's double. And its ears too. These little touches, like these detail touches, do make a big difference in terms of bringing a lot of character to your creatures or things like that. cool i hope you guys had fun i did this is really fun to do uh, we will try a different character or creature uh, next week probably uh, again something pretty simple uh, we'll see but yeah i hope you guys have fun it was good hanging out with you guys have a good week all right see you guys bye <laughs>